Hello, welcome to another edition of the Media Dialogues. I'm Anuradha Sengupta and on this show, we use the top line lens to view business. A lot of changes have been reported in consumer behavior from across industry sectors over the past year. The personal care and beauty sectors were deeply affected as work from home, social distancing and mask wearing became the norm and people started according a higher priority than ever before to personal health and wellness. To understand if all these changes have had a lasting impact on companies and the possible strategic shifts they've had to make to cope, I'm going to talk today to Amit Jain. He's the managing director of L'Oreal India. The French beauty major rang up nearly 28 billion euros in global sales in 2020. It has been present here for over 25 years with 14 brands in the hair and beauty product categories spanning the mass as well as luxury ends of the market. Amit, thank you so much for joining us. It's a pleasure to be on your show, Anuradha. Thank you. I want to start with uh, the global results that have come in for L'Oreal, which were declared just last month. And, you know, 20, close to 28 billion euros in overall sales and just about a 4% drop in revenues year on year. Does that trend bear out in India? Has the experience been the same for you? Now, obviously, you are aware that India as an economy was far worse hit than the rest of the world. So we did see a very severe drop uh, in the calendar quarter two, uh, which is the April, May, June quarter, which started coming back uh, gradually uh, uh, at first. And then in the calendar quarter four, we saw a fairly significant, what we at L'Oreal call a beauty bounce back. My sense is, in following the global results, one mm -hmm. of the mainstays of the bounce back mm -hmm. was the that we are heavily invested in digital and e-commerce. Mm. And that really been a very, very good option for our uh, consumers who want to access our brands. I want to talk a little bit about some of the changes that we saw in consumer behavior over the past year. I mean, of course, we saw a lot of people, uh, you know, sort of prioritizing different aspects of life and lifestyle. How many of these changes, Amit, do you see having, uh, you know, as, as being here to stay uh, and therefore pivotal uh, to changes in strategic thinking at your end, at your company's end? Anuradha, it's a big question. And I can tell you that the last year has been replete for learning for us. Mm. And the kind of insights which we have generated have been quite amazing. Uh, so if I'm not overstating the case, you know, we have heard of K-beauty from Korea and J-beauty from Japan. Yes. We might be seeing the advent of I-beauty in India. We see three big trends uh, which have started unfolding over the last year, hmm. which have been uh, somewhat catalyzed by uh, the pandemic. The first one, obvi obviously, is the digitization. The second is the entire diversity hmm. of choice. Hmm. And the third bit is the consumer uh, seeking an enriching experience. Yeah. So if I may build on each one of them. Sure, let's, the, let's take digitization first since that seems to be so core to you know, the success in a challenging year like the way the year 2020 was. Yeah, so stating the obvious, there was a, a boom uh, on e-commerce mm. and you know, depending on what survey you're looking at, there was somewhere between 20 and 28% first time buyers for our beauty categories online. Mm -hmm. uh, things like e-consultation, e-diagnosis went up in the 30s. Very importantly, uh, what this led to was what we like to call the low-touch economy. When consumers can't go out to the shops, touch and feel the products, our investment in beauty tech at L'Oreal came to the fore. And uh, we were in a position, along with a lot of our colleagues in the industry, to give the consumers the option of virtual try-ons. So consumers from the safety and comfort of their couches could suddenly start accessing their brands uh, at home. And thanks to uh, applications like Moriface, which we've got integrated with a lot of our partners, consumers can actually try on various colors, makeups from the security of their homes. We have something called L'Oreal Skin Genius, 
which allows you to actually scan your face mm. and artificial intelligence actually suggests a skincare regimen now this is not the future this is stuff which has started happening right so one trend on digitization was virtual try on and the second bit was uh, as the uh, pandemic started lifting a bit was the emergence of the whole uh, purchase uh, online and yes. try online or the other way around yeah so the uh, you know ropo the research online purchase online vice yes. versa which is the omni channel consumers hmm. so uh, this really led to the consumer being spoiled for choice as they had extra time at home and they started uh, experimenting a lot so that really drove the proliferation of brands and we can see the emergence of some online only beauty brands right so uh, amit do you see this experience the buying experience that you managed to get online do you see that be becoming a mainstay of the beauty buying and shopping experience uh, going forward even when the world goes to a pre covid normal a post vaccination world see uh, in a country like india where beauty is still a very nascent category yeah penetration still remains the single biggest opportunity yeah. so uh, unlike most of the sophisticated uh, western economies i believe there's going to be growth both online as well as traditional general trade though we do believe that online will become a bigger and bigger chunk of the incremental consumers being recruited into the category Right. Yeah, but there is space for both. India has got among the lowest per capita beauty consumption. It's in the region of three euros, compared yeah. to a China which is about eight x of that, a yes. Thailand which is five. Hmm. So we have such a long way to go. I won't park any favorites in terms of it's just going to be online only. Fair. Online will drive recruitment. It will drive great consumer experience. The other piece which I was talking about, yes. which experience saving, uh, seeking consumer. however uh, general trade will remain very very big for the indian beauty industry right uh, you know uh, talking about the digital experience or the digital plank on which business will rest rest now and will continue to rest going forward uh, tell us give us a sense of uh, the role it plays in your advertising and therefore marketing because you know i was looking at some of the top 10 spenders on television category wise personal care and hair care prod, uh, you know were right up there and so were and then shampoos uh, were, were as, a, as a subset of that but the top 10 companies did not include l'oreal uh, of course businesses are of different sizes i do understand that but tell me in your marketing and adver- in your advertising budget does digital have the lion's share uh, in a country like india or is it still television mm-hmm. so first advertising uh, spends are not necessarily a surrogate about the size of a business yeah it depends on where you choose to deploy your communication sure so we l'oreal uh, as you you know talked about our global results and we very clearly said we have placed a very big bet on dig- digital and e-commerce. Hmm. So we have seen a big shift of our advertising spends away from television uh into digital and that is led exactly by the consumer behavior I just spoke about. Hmm. Yeah. Consumers are spending more and more time on the smaller screen. We know that uh Insta, Facebook, India is now among the largest markets in the yeah. world. As is the case for uh, Google and YouTube. So yes there's a much bigger chunk of our uh, messaging which is now happening uh, digitally and let me explain why that gives us the luxury of completely sharp shooting the right cohorts as they're called right now mm. or the trust mm. depending on whom you're talking to so the ability to customize messaging the same messaging of a garnier uh, naturals uh, now driven by ai could have 100 different avatars depending on which cohort it is being served up to right so that's the advantage of digital hmm. which is the consumer gets the messaging depending on whatever are their needs as opposed to linear advertising over television does it have your the lion's share of the l'oreal ad spend in india digital well i'd call it pretty much even steven right 
Okay. You, call it. you know, the next <laughs> launch that you all did a few years ago uh, was is a sort of case study in terms of a digital first um, sort of launch, isn't it? And therefore, uh, L'Oreal is also known for the use of influencers. Uh, there are some new ASCII guidelines coming in. I want you to talk about uh, how you see some of the challenges in using influencer marketing, which is pretty much uh, what beauty businesses are doing a lot of. Next represents... Uh a very unique experiment for us here in India where we decided to go online only. Yeah. And that's turned out to be uh, very interesting learnings. And as you can see, the brand is up there and growing well for us. Uh, in terms of the use of influencers, uh, you know, we at L'Oreal, our standards are way beyond the ASCII guidelines. Mm. So already self-regulated ourselves in terms of the use of influencers. And, uh, uh, you know, there are a very, very clear global guidelines in terms of uh, what and where they can message uh, L'Oreal brands or endorse them. So very clearly, uh, uh, we are setting the bar way above the ASCII guidelines. So they haven't really touched us very much. You know, there are a lot of advertisers who are now looking at the ROI from digital advertising uh, and mm. talking about uh, wanting greater transparency from the tech giants in how and what that, you know, what kind of data they are giving you to ascertain mm. ROI. Right. Yeah. So, uh, you know, these tech giants obviously are global partners for us. And uh, there is the inevitable push and pull yes. of attribution. Uh, of sales to advertising, and that is, of course, the holy grail of uh, digital advertising. Uh, I'd like to think that over the last couple of years, we made a lot of progress with the tech giants. Uh, they've been very, very collaborative uh, in helping us uh, drive attribution of revenue uh, and, of course, sharing relevant data within the guidelines uh, of uh, the statutes in India. And this is let's face it, it's driven also by a convergence of interest. Yes. Clearly, the tech giants are driving, uh, you know, advertising uh, in the face of television. And the more they share, the better is the business case for them, for consumer brands like ours to move digital. Right. Let's talk about the second uh, big key uh, plank of iBeauty, which is diversity. You want to quickly give us a take on what you find, what the findings are at L'Oreal for that? Yeah. Uh, in fact, this is a, a interesting new trend, which has been catalyzed uh, by the pandemic, where we see that the Indian consumer right now is searching for their style of beauty. No longer do you have these very mass uh, products which kind of meet uh, the uh, needs of the janta. Given the proliferation of digital and access to uh, imagery, uh, uh, you know, on global platforms, consumers are demanding personalization more than ever. Mm. So let me give you a small example. Sure. Uh, you know, uh, a year back, we launched uh, a foundation called Fit Me, which is available in 18 different shades, which meets pretty much most of the Indian skin types. Mm -hmm. And initially, we kind of thought this would be restricted to a few fast movers. But guess what? Uh, consumers are voting with their feet mm -hmm. or their complexions, mm -hmm. and they're very happy to now get foundations which match their complexions. Mm -hmm. And the kind of demand which we are uh, uh, you know, receiving for something like this is amazing. Similarly, consumers seeking products which are customized for their skin types mm. and, uh, you know, being who they are as opposed to being somebody else who's portrayed out there in advertising is a big new trend. Amit, for this is really heartening to hear for me personally and as a professional, of course. But, I'm, you know, because we've seen these, uh, you know, the kind of diversity and inclusion-oriented movements that uh, that have emerged in, your, in Europe. We saw a lot of the Black Lives Matter movement in America last year and the kind of impact it had. I'm really pleasantly surprised to hear that in the market in India, you're seeing customers, consumers, wanting real beauty and you know to acknowledge the diversity in beauty and fairness not being such a big uh, you know sort of aspiration 
Am I right? Mm -hmm. Is it because you know even your competitor Hindustan Unilever's dramatic shift from uh, fair and lovely to glow and lovely was actually triggered by something that was happening globally. Yeah, and I'd like to think uh, it's taken root for us here in India, and you know that makes us feel uh, you know really uh, glad that we were ahead of the trend, because uh, for example, L'Oreal Paris. Uh, is turning 50 with its uh, iconic uh, line about because you're worth it. You're worth right? it, yeah. So our complete philosophy is about each and every woman finding her style of beauty, her idea of beauty, as opposed to being uh, measured through the male gaze and being herself and building her self-confidence. Uh, so maybe we were slightly ahead of our times in India, but now over the last year or so, we are seeing an upsurge of this sort of consumer behavior, uh, which leads to uh, you know a lot of affinity with our brand. This acceptance of your own face and your own skin and being comfortable in it, uh, do you see that this limited to small premium ends of the market or is this a mass market phenomenon? Because, you know, I mean, if you look at your uh, Nielsen data and stuff, your fairness creams are still selling, isn't it? So I want to know how much of this is bearing out in the mass market. So Anuradha, in all fairness, uh, you know, uh, fairness is a manifest need in India. Hmm. It's not going to be in a hurry. Yeah. The issue is not the fairness cream. The in issue is how it was portrayed. Right. About to make out about one complexion is better than the other. Yes. So of course, fairness and lightning is going to be around for a long, long time, but it's not necessarily better than the next complexion. That is the core issue. Right. Uh, having said that, to answer your question, uh, I gave you the example of Fit Me, which comes in a variety of shades, uh, from light to dark. And in response to the uh, demand from small town India, mm. uh, had to now launch a Fit Me Mini, uh, right. which can actually travel to South, uh, you know, a small town India. And we are delighted to let you know that uh, you know uh, we are selling across all kind of complexion types and skin tones, as opposed to fairness. That so I think. It a very, very important trend, which we are seeing the beginning of. Now, let's go to the third one that you had mentioned. Uh, you know, you said digital diversity. Yeah, the third bit I talked about was consumers wanting an enriching experience. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we ran some research, uh, you know, midway through the pandemic. And obviously, consumers were at home. Uh, they had time, uh, which was safe from all the commuting. So at the beginning or the end of the workday, they were looking for their fitness regimen or their beauty regime. And 71% uh, consumers expressed they wanted enriching experiences which uplift their lifestyle. Uh, so what does that mean? It means that uh, consumers, you know, for example, we were talking about them being comfortable yes. about who they are. Uh, natural hair has come back big. Mm. Uh, people are comfortable mm. with their waist and curls. No longer is straight, flattened hair necessarily the archetype of beauty. But you must be yeah. concerned about the fact, Amit, that a lot of women are saying it's okay to show the white hair and the grey hair. Is that is that a concern for somebody for who hair colour is such a predominant category? <laughs> Great question. You know, India is an incredible market right now and penetration of the hair colour category is barely in its 20s. Yeah, so, so not so much to worry about. Yeah, yeah. So there's a long way to go. But just to finish the bit about seeking experiences, sure. you know, consumers are looking now, they're obsessive about uh, hygiene in their products. Uh, they're looking for light makeup. Mm -hmm. So in response to this whole bit about needing to wear the mask, yes. you look for light makeup. So you see an upsurge uh, in uh, skin serums as opposed to the traditional heavy duty creams. Mm. Uh, you're looking at an upsurge for cosmetics, uh, uh, you know, which allow your skin to breathe. Uh, uh, there's a lot of demand for non-transferable makeup, which is coming on. Mm. So we see a boom in, uh, you know, our long-staying uh, lipsticks like Creamy Stay yes. Map from Maybelline. And of course, most importantly, in terms of the experiences, the Indian consumers become really demanding on natural, which was, of course, an uh, emerging trend uh, for many years, hmm. linked with science and effic efficacy. 
So it's incredible the kind of things which you're seeing there. There's turmeric with vitamin C mm. for good. Yeah, or there's rose water with hyaluronic acid. They're right. incredible combinations which are being brewed uh, to meet this emerging uh, experience uh, seeking right. Indian consumers. Amit, when I was reading some of the trends and highlights of how L'Oreal has done globally, one thing st uh, stood out and that is uh, the really sharp rise uh, in active cosmetics and its share of the business perhaps and in the way it's grown. Uh, is, does that bear out in India given that this is really at the premium end of the price uh, and value uh, spectrum, isn't it? L'Oreal globally has four businesses, which is the luxury business, active cosmetics, professional, and the mass consumer. India right now is represented by three of the divisions, and we are actively looking at uh, getting in active cosmetics uh, in face of an upsurge of uh, consumer concern around hygiene and wellness. And we see you know, a, a lot of gray market imports which have come in uh, in the face of consumer yes, demand yes. over the past year. So yeah, clearly the consumer is guiding us and actively looking at getting some of our iconic global brands like uh, Vichy and La Roche-Posay and CeraVe. And we are in the process of evaluating them right now. So uh, are you saying that we can look at some new launches in 2021? Early days as yet, like I said, very transparently, we are in the process of evaluating it with consumers. Hmm. And of course, the consumer will tell us if the time is right. Right. Uh, Amit, it was such a incredible year the last year. We are still really not out of it. Do you want to close with uh, telling us what were the key learnings for a consumer-focused uh, company with the brands that you have? I'm stating the obvious when I say stay focused on the consumer and your customer, uh, regardless of whatever the diversions um, uh, uh, outside. So, you know, through this pandemic, we stayed focused on the fact that the consumer still is looking for our brands. And we evolved massively uh, using the beauty tech platforms which we are building. So essentially, uh, we reinvented the way we are going to our salons, 40,000 partners. We built up a complete e-way of reaching our salons, 200,000 addresses through beauty tech, and they served our consumers through social commerce and various other evolving ways of e-commerce. So, you know, my one message is through these troubled times, stay focused on your consumer and their needs, and then the right solutions tend to emerge. Stay focused on the consumer and their needs. Amit Jain, thank you so much for joining us. We look forward to more conversations going forward. Good luck and thank you. It's been a pleasure being on your show, Anubhaga. And thank you very much for watching. Look out for another conversation on the Media Dialogues. And in the meanwhile, stay tuned to CNBC TV 18.